God is good and all the time uh, we welcome every person that is here this morning we welcome the live viewers as well uh, we welcome every person that is here for the first time you're welcome into God's family be blessed and be encouraged today and I hope and I know that you already received a lot this morning from the testimonies from a uh, mentorship message that uh Martin presented and I know that God's going to speak to you even more. If you open up your hearts today, if you open your mind, God will speak into your life in Jesus mighty name. Amen. With our church we have a vision and our vision is uh, is sharp. Our vision is uh, is single and it's the, it's the vision to see thousands of people being saved, healed and delivered locally and millions globally. We believe that God has chosen us for such a time as this, that God has anointed us and God has given us the vision and fire in our hearts and we're going to stay true to that vision until we see it accomplished in Jesus mighty name. Do you believe it church? Amen. This vision is not only mine, it's not only pastors, it's not only for the leaders but this vision for, for every person that is in this place, you are part of this vision. If you believe it, say yes. yes. Amen. Uh, therefore, um, we, we are launching an internship our first internship this summer which will last three months starting in June right after this uh, right after when school gets over all the way through September and it's going to be every day here from uh, from early in the morning starting from six in the morning till uh, one two uh, o'clock afternoon uh, people are already signing up from different states different cities that will come here partake of that internship and they for three months they will learn from the word of God they will learn the principles of God they will learn uh, life principles it's going to be very practical uh, in their personal life and in life of ministry where they will, will learn how to minister and also they will receive personal training and mentorship and freedom in Jesus name. So uh, we are excited about it. We believe that God's going to use us to raise many, many leaders. He's going to use us to raise many pastors and apostles and ministers uh, that will be launched uh, in, into different churches in different, uh, different cities. Amen church? So now without any further ado, I want you to open your scriptures, your word, uh, your Bible to Psalm 91 and we're gonna go straight into the Word of God and we're just gonna talk about the subject of my on my talk today the title will be the dwelling place say the dwelling place and Psalm 91 this is a, a Psalm that I one of my one of my favorites uh, scriptures in the Bible something that I I use every single day I pray through it every single day and um, I'll just try to share with you my heart uh, of uh, uh, from this psalm so Psalm 91 goes like this he who dwells in a secret place say secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of Almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge say refuge and my fortress my God in him I will trust surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the perilous nor, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes you shall you shall look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most higher dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling he shall give his angels to he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone you shall tread upon lion and young cobra the uh, lion and cobra the young lion and serpent you shall trample underfoot because you have set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation what a great psalm what a great promise of God God says that those that love me 
I will deliver them. I will be with them in trouble. I will lead them through it. I will deliver them and honor them. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This psalm first and first first and foremost speaks to me of consistency. A dwelling place, in other words, it's a living place, a place where you live, a place where you call home, a place where you constantly come back to, a place where you're always there. And consistency, it's a very rare commodity nowadays and consistency is, consistency is valid very high. Probably the biggest, uh, probably the, the weakest uh, characteristics that humanity has and we have is probably the consistency. Because if we look in our life and we'll see that because of inconsistency we have not accomplished things that we should have accomplished. We have not done things that we should have done and we uh, started some projects and dropped them halfway because lack of consistency. If you look at successful people in this world and look and you see and you kind of trace in their character you'll see one thing is that those people they have consistency they're very focused and determined and they do it repeatedly they do it routinely and that's what gets them to the success that they have for example Colin Sanders went around a thousand places trying to send his chicken recipes and all of them denied him and they found no interest but in fact now we know Kentucky fried chicken today it's in every city um, and we eat that chicken uh, and we enjoy it but that man he was consistent in his uh, in persistent in his actions therefore today he is he became he's not alive now but he became a successful man we know such a man as Thomas Edison that he he tried to invent he tried to invent a light light bulb he tried 10,000 times yet he failed he continued he was consistent at it 10,000 times I mean I I don't know what what was driving him but he remained consistent in his actions therefore today we have these lights and we're sitting and reading and writing things in the light Sylvester Stallone you guys know Sylvester Stallone you guys know the rock the Rocky the famous movie yes you know that he went to many agents and he talked to many producers and all of them denied him he got he he wasted his money his resources that he got down to 600 bucks that's all he had left he didn't know how he's gonna survive next month and and, and pay uh, his bills until he continued to do it he continued to be consistent persistent in his actions until one producer picked up his movie and made this movie the rocky movies and we now we know it's like a legendary movies of boxing and if you haven't seen it you, you're missing out on life and so uh and so consistency is is very important important consistency is what sets people aside what sets successful and not successful people look through your life right now look through the things the project you've started commitments that you've made things that you should be doing and you'll see that in places where there is inconsistency in places that you stopped you stop succeeding you stop moving forward Recently I saw an article in the news which I thought was, was very unique. Uh, former president, for, former US president Jimmy Carter, how many of you guys know this president? He recently battled with cancer with, through which God healed him and just a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was like maybe three, four weeks ago, he was first time in his lifetime late to church for 25 minutes. First time in his life because his son died an hour before that. His son was 25 years old. He came to church and apologized for being late for 25 minutes and went back to do his Sunday school which he does right now on a regular basis. He teaches Sunday school. A president of the United States, okay, never missed church, not never missed church, never been late to church and when he was late for 25 minutes for which he apologized to the congregation, it was because his son who was 25 years old that died unexpectedly an hour before church. Now we see why successful people are successful and those people that are not successful they usually have a characteristic of inconsistency in their life. Say consistency. Say I will be consistent 
Amen. Amen. But today what I want to talk about is from Psalm 91 about consistency in our prayer life. Because, because our prayer life is what holds every other area in our lives together. When we have a commitment in our devotional life, when we have a constant continuous fellowship with the Holy Spirit, this will help us to develop the character and, and, and discipline that will translate into every other area in our life and it will help us to accommodate and put in place every other area in our life. And so today as we read Psalm 91, David says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. Pretty much he who spends time, he who is consistent, he who made his home in the presence of God, in the fellowship of God. He, and then the rest of Psalm 91 follows with all the blessings and all the benefits that, that, that are tied into a consistent fellowship with God. So if you, a lot of people, a lot of people claim these promises of Psalm 91 over their life but you have to understand that not all the promises of God belongs to the believers. There are some yes there are some promises that belong to the believers but these Psalms in the promises that contain the promise of rest, the promise of healing, the promise of life of victory, the promise of life of honor, the, life, the promise of being satisfied and fulfilled in life, these promises contain only to those who made God's presence consistent in the life. They are for those that made God's presence their living place. For those that have a continuous fellowship for, uh, with God. The promise of God says that if when He cries out to me I will answer. That promise is for those that dwell in a secret place. When we make God's presence, when we make our devotional life, when we make the fe fellowship with the Holy Spirit to be our main priority and we don't break it, we don't break the routine, we don't break the consistency but every day regardless whether we're tired or not, regardless whether we have good things going on in our lives or not, regardless whether we have um, you know regardless whether we have bills to pay regardless whether we have you know uh, whether we go into a hard times regardless how we feel emotionally when we still choose to come and give our time in the morning or afternoon or whenever you spend but it's consistently it's the same time that say at the same time every day when you begin to make a priority of it and when you begin to spend time with God God begins to bless your life and Bring, uh, begins to bring things into your life. The promise when we begin to make God our dwelling place, God says that you will find rest. You know many people in this world they're looking for peace. Many people in this world looking for rest in many different places through many different uh, ideologies, have uh, many different ideas. Some people look uh, in, for rest and peace of their soul to, uh, through drugs, through alcohol, through sex, through immorality, others people, the other people trying to pump, uh, uh, take uh, pills from anxiety, from depression, sleeping pills so they can rest at night and sleep. Just because you guys know, just because you sleep at night, it doesn't mean you rest. Because rest truly comes from God. Rest comes when we continuously abide in His presence. Rest is something no money can buy, no riches can buy. That's why many people. That's why a lot, of, a lot of people that achieve success in life, achieve um, certain status in life, achieve wealth in life, end their life. Or, or go into drugs and drinking, things like that. And you think, why would you, why would you do such a thing when you have everything that you need in the world? Because money can't buy rest. But when you commit to a steady relationship, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you might not have all the things in the world at that moment, but surely you will have rest in God. Amen. The promise of freedom and deliverance. Verse 3 says, surely he will deliver you. And then verse 14 says, because he set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. When we make God 
our dwelling place. God promises to set us free from anything and everything that binds us and keeps us down. And the limitation that is put on our life. When we spend time with God, God gives a promise that those things will be broken in our lives. There is a certain freedom that we receive when we come to God. When we get saved, God sets us free from anxiety, from depression, from drugs, from alcohol, different things. Uh, there are certain freedoms that we receive when we go to prayer line. Where we go visit the man of God that, that moves in a greater anointing. Or we may be some place in a service where just, just tangibly God's presence, God's anointing is there. And certain chains fall off of us and we receive freedom. And there is certain freedom that we will experience only because of, a cons of our consistent fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 8 in verse 36 Jesus says Who the, whom the Son sets free is what? Is free indeed. There is certain freedom you will experience when the Son of God sets you free. When God just gives you by His grace, by His mercy, you've done nothing to deserve it. You come and He just sets you free for certain things and I believe that God is going to do certain things and will set you free from certain things this morning but few verses above he says that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free that word know is the same word that in the bible in genesis used that adam knew his wife the word know means intimacy close intimacy you shall know the truth when you are in a close intimacy, when you're in close fellowship, when you dwell on the truth, when you dwell with God, then God has a promise of freedom and deliverance. I know some people come sometimes and ask, you know, I have this struggle in my life. I have this habit that I want to break. I have this smoking addiction, this drinking addiction. I have the, this uh, pornography addiction. I have this, I, I have this, um, uh, you know, character uh, flaw in my character that I can't overcome and I've been you know going to prayer line I've been going uh using in anointed water or this and that and why can I still receive freedom in this area and this is what I tell people is that you have to commit yourself to a relationship with God consistent not one day you're in five days you're out not today you're today uh you're praying for this week and next three weeks you're not even seen at church you're not even seen in morning prayers and I tell them you have to be like 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 the chicken uh like a chick in the egg you have to allow your for your relationship to grow so that your growth breaks that shell breaks that limitation breaks that addiction that has been put on you said so the dwelling place this is a place where we commit to be with God this is a place where we spend time with God God also promises that no when we spend time with God, when we spend time in His Word, that no sickness and no deadly disease will come near our place. This is the life insurance, this is, a, this is the health insurance that no other insurance can match. See, we take, um, we take health insurance through our workplaces and other places so that when we do get sick, that it will help us to cover the bills. But God's health insurance assures you that no plague will come near your place. You can't beat that. Say amen. 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 God declares through the dwelling in His place, through consistency in His in relationship with God, God says that you will walk a life of victory. A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. And God promises that they will not come near you. Certain issues, certain problems that you're trying to tackle in your life, certain things that you want trying to overcome in your life and it's hard and you, you feel like you're being beat down by those things. I promise you one thing, according to God's word, that if you commit to relationship with God, God will give you victory over those things in Jesus name. Amen. God promises a life of honor. He says those that set their love upon me. He says I will deliver them and I will honor them. Say honor. honor. If you want to walk in honor in your life and honor that, that that lasts and honor that that no man can take from you because you know there is recognition by men. Today they recognize you, tomorrow they don't like you and they shame you and they put you down. But when God honors you, no man can put you down in Jesus name. Amen. The life with God, consistency with God brings honor, brings influence, brings recognition. You will never be below 
you will never be a tail God says you will be the head and not the tail you'll be the top and you will not be in the bottom say amen, amen. and God will give you life that is satisfied so we all want to and we all desire to have a consistent prayer life we all desire to have a consistent devotional life consistent fellowship life but what does that what is stopping us from having it what brings us down and I believe there is only one enemy of prayer and this is Satan and demons they do not want you to pray they will use any tool any weapon anything that they can put their hands on any way they can influence you to stop you from praying because devil knows demons know when you pray God begins to move when you spend time with God you begin you, you become stronger when you spend time in his presence you will be victorious and you will and they will have no place in your life you guys those of you that have been coming for some time and you have seen some of the testimonies and seen some of the prayer lines that we have once uh, once every month and then when 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 anointing of God touches and demons begin to manifest and they begin to and then begin to speak out and they they say one thing is that we hate prayer we hate prayer because when person prays when a family prays for them when they pray they limit us they stop us we are we can't influence them we can't touch them and they say we hate prayer and so you have to understand that anytime you decide to you you make a commitment to spend time with God anytime you decide to, you know what I'm going to be coming to morning prayers from now on five in the morning six in the morning seven whatever your schedule permits and allows I'm going to be consistent in my prayer time with God you have to understand that there is an enemy that is after your prayer and every time you get those feelings of laziness feeling of sleepiness how many of you guys try to pray and like feel like man any other time I'm not sleepy but the moment I try to pray this like sleepiness comes over me what's going on because enemy is after your prayer you have to know your enemy and you have to discern his schemes in his plans and you have to command that enemy to be off you at that moment so you can continue in your commitment and devotion for God uh, uh, Satan is your enemy and he wants to bring you down bring your prayer life down and he Satan has two missions, two goals. If he doesn't succeed, uh, succeed in one, then he, he at least tries the other. If he doesn't succeed, you stop him from knowing Jesus and giving your life to Jesus. At the very least, he will try to limit your relationship with God through, uh, through prayerlessness. Demons and Satan is behind prayerlessness. Every time, next time you decide to pray and you feel, you get all these weird feelings not to pray laziness uh, busyness you have to understand 100% behind it is demonic influence and you have to come against it and make a decision to pray in Jesus name amen, amen. the biggest tool that Satan uses is sin when we when sin, Satan uses sin to entice us into uh, into it and then when we sin he turns back around and he begins to blame us condemn us and bring us shame so we must understand that satan uses sin as a bait to stop our prayerlessness in our relationship with god to take us out of the dwelling place to evict us from living in the presence of god and so when we realize that and when we when we understand and know such a thing we begin to stay away from sin this is why we stay away from sin but when we do fall into sin we all fall short of the glory of God none of us are perfect that we run immediately back to God we run immediately back to God that we don't allow Satan to keep us away from God David declares and he says that that my God he is my refuge there's a reason why David chose those words carefully he is my refuge these words are inspired by the Holy Spirit you have to understand that Israelites when they got into the promised land God told them specifically to have six cities of refuge places these cities were for the for the people if you for for example was involved in a in a, in, in an accident you you killed somebody on an accident uh, and so and and you didn't do with intention you didn't do out of anger the city of refuge would be, a, would be a place where you'd run to get asylum so that 
the people will not avenge you for it people will not kill you because you kill their neighbor you kill their friend you kill their uh family member so the city of refuge this is a place where you will run there and a priest would take you in for protection until the court date and, and if you were proven innocent in the court you will go back to the city of asylum asylum and and live there and legally the avengers will not be able to touch you you can live there without fear until the high priest of israel would die when he would die then if you live long enough to see that you will be set free and you can leave the city of refuge and you would be free without any fear that avengers will come after you so david says he is my refuge what he's saying is that anytime I fall, anytime I mess up, anytime I sin, I run back to God because he covers me from my avenger. He protects me from my enemy. He protects me from my accuser. And because I high priest, which is Jesus Christ, he already died. Today, today we can be free to live a life without worrying about avenger coming after us to pay the price for our mistakes you have to understand when Jesus died he justified us that word justified means this is what happens in the courtroom setting for example if you are found guilty of murder and and the prosecutor is pushing charges against you and he's bringing evidence against you and here comes Jesus on the scene he steps in instead of you and he says I'm the one who did it I'm taking the blame and this person you are justified meaning you've never done anything wrong see redemption is what something you did you acknowledge it and you got forgiven and redeemed but you still have a record of it you've done it in the past justification is Jesus stepping in for you saying I did it he has never done it he's completely justified no record of wrong this is what Jesus did for us put your hands together for Jesus so I want to encourage you this morning and I want to tell you if you want to make God your dwelling place if you want to be in consistent fellowship with God if you want to have that unbreakable um, relationship with God you have to understand that you will have to make God your refuge place you will have to make your cro the cross your living place it's a place that you continuously to come not based on your sacrifice not based on your work not based on what you did or didn't do but you come to God into his presence based on what Jesus done and Jesus alone and so when we come to God based on his sacrifice based on what he had did for us as a high priest that we will be able to maintain consistent relationship with God then Satan will not be able to come with guilt and shame and say look what you've done you promised to God never to do this again and you did it again you repented before a hundred times for it you still did it again but when you learn to live with God and as a as a God God as your refuge place you'll be able to say Satan I am forgiven I am justified I am redeemed I have no record of wrong God expects me in his dwelling place God expects me in in my prayer time God is waiting for me and I'm not gonna let anything stop in me and I'm gonna run to God and I'm gonna spend my days I'm gonna spend my time I'm gonna spend my morning in God's presence and when you begin to do that you'll see how you're gonna begin to walk a life of victory you will see how God will protect your life your hell he's he's gonna he's gonna guide you anytime you find yourself in a difficult situation God says I will be with him and I will deliver him out of it many afflictions of the righteous Bible says but God delivers them all in Jesus mighty name if you believe it put your hands together raise up on your feet as we're gonna begin to go into worship and declare that our God is mighty our God is strong he is our refuge he is our strength in Jesus mighty name and today we will live and dwell in the presence of God in Jesus mighty name